Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations, and behind me are the brand new quilts from Creative Grid's Curvy Log Cabin Trim Tool. Now this trim tool is just that. It's going to help you stay nice and even as you build your log cabin strips. But because the way they are laid out, there are skinny strips on one side and larger strips on the other, you get the curves. Now a lot of these patterns are available through the Cut Loose Press Patterns, which are the nice simple two-sided pages you can get at your local quilt store. This one, for example, is squiggles, just great two colors put together. And behind me, probably one of my favorites because it's just, it's so alive and the colors are so vibrant. This one was probably the favorite one when I pulled it out of the box. Now, I don't know about you, but back in the day when I started quilting, Everybody said, do a log cabin, it's a quilt in the day. And I went, okay. But I was young and I was still learning my quarter inch seam allowance. And I know this tool would have helped a ton because when I got finished, not all my blocks were all the same size, which made them a little harder to put together. But with this tool, what you end up doing is every time you put on a side or two, you trim because the marks are set to keep everything perfect. Now, another thing it says is what size to cut. Since we have skinny ones and large ones, it says that you want to cut the narrow strips at least seven, or excuse me, <laughs> one and a half inches wide, which means if you have strips that are a little bit wider, you have a little bit more room to negotiate getting them perfectly trimmed up. And the wide strips are at least two and a quarter inch, which is really close to two and a half inch. So if you've cut up leftover strips and put them in your box for later use, you could use those for the larger size. Now this one over here is actually called Trim the Tree and it does utilize the traditional log cabin trim tool for these regular center blocks where the sizes of all of the logs are the same and then they've used the curvy trim tool to create the shape of the tree. Now here's what you're going to look at when you start to put your colors together. Depending on which way you layer them, you will either get circles or diamonds, which is what really brings these blocks alive. So if you're even considering doing a log cabin, why not make it with a little bit extra pizzazz and curve the finished look. So in here, the skinny strips are the lighter color, and here the larger strips uh, is the center and creates the circle. Now, once you get thinking about how you could change these blocks up, you will notice anything is possible. Look at that. With the heart, you are creating the shapes and blocks to be perfectly where you're at. Now, with a log cabin, it's very similar to a courthouse steps. So depending on how you actually lay out your fabrics, you could turn a courthouse step layout into something totally different. And this is called the Texas two-step with a little bit more modern flair. You want to see how this ruler really works? Let's sit down and see how you do the trimming. Here are the colors I've pulled out to play with some curvy log cabin blocks. Starting off with yellow in the center, this batik is all going to be the skinny side, and I cut those a little bit bigger. I cut those one and three quarters, and then these are the two and a half inch strips. So they are cut oversized, but you'll see it's kind of easier to just have that extra fabric so it's easy to trim. So we're going to start off with how we get that center block. Now on the ruler, you can cut squares that are actually just one and three quarters, or you can use the ruler if you want. So whichever you'd prefer, but we're going to cut a couple of those. You can use the marks right here, but you notice that there are little holes in this ruler, and that is so we can prep some of the first seams to be exactly one quarter inch. So take a fabric marker and mark all your center squares with the little dots. This is the Frixon pin, so this is gonna iron away later. And that will help you when you go to put your first strip on that you really are getting a nice accurate quarter inch seam the very first time you start stitching. So after you start sewing around, so I did the larger ones and you do wanna work clockwise. So we did the larger strips of pink and then these are the skinnier strips. 
Now we're ready for our first trimming. Now I do trim after I put on each piece, press and trim, press and trim, but this will really get you an idea how the ruler works. What you have on one side is settings for the wide rounds, and then on the other side, rotated 180 degrees, you have it set for the narrow side. So this is the narrow side, and this is round one. So I'm gonna line up the narrow round one square in the middle of my perfectly aligned center yellow strip, and we're gonna trim this down. So you'll see how this works. Now if you need to, you can rotate this around, 180 degrees and rot your, rotate your ruler around 180 degrees and then you can make sure that you get everything trimmed just perfect. So here's how it's going to look as we work a little bit further. Here's a, our skinny side again, but this is round two. So we're putting round two square right in the middle. And we have dotted lines to really make sure that we are all within the proper boundaries for the perfect eight and a half inch finished block that we'll end up with. Once again, rotate around 90 degree, 180 degrees, and then this way you can get that second side here perfectly squared off for the next round of sewing. And I will tell you, these blocks come out so flat, your quilter's gonna be happy because your quilt is gonna come out flat. If you're quilting it yourself, you're gonna be really impressed with how accurate these blocks are. Here's a side where we got the larger side, so we're gonna find wide round three. Around, let's see here, which round is this? This one is the wide side. Oh, this is one where you just kinda set this using the dotted lines for that second side here, just so I can get evened up. And then once again, we can kind of turn this so we get a nice even side. Turn the square. Don't forget to turn the square. It'll be real obvious if you don't turn the square because nothing, none of the lines line up with any part of your actual block. Here we go. A little smidge off this side and that side too. Look at how we're going. How about one more? This is the final one. We're gonna start with the narrow side, round three. Perfect, I love, oh my goodness. I, it's almost like I've never sewed this perfect before, but you know what it is? It's really just the fact that I have trimmed on every single time I have an accurate square before I start stitching again. And watch, here's where we're gonna do it. Rotate and rotate, and this will be our final size. This will take us right out to the absolute outside edges of this ruler. Now we're ready to start laying out our blocks and seeing what layout we like the best. So the curvy log cabin trim tool and the regular log cabin trim tool is available on our website at heirloomcreations.net.